Hey, it's Boober! So, I'm not a very big drinker, but I am a very big taster. And what I mean by that is I love to taste or sample food or drinks and just analyze the taste of it. And so it should come as no surprise that my favorite subject when it comes to beverages is sensory analysis. In this video, we're going to talk about what exactly sensory analysis is and why it's so important in the beverage industry. So, let's go! The sensory division of the Institute of Food Technologists defines sensory evaluation as a scientific discipline used to evoke measure, analyze, and interpret reactions to those characteristics of foods and materials as they are perceived by the senses of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. Sensory analysis or sensory evaluation is a pretty new scientific discipline and it's only been around since the 1940s, but it's grown alongside the rise of consumer products and processed foods. Again, the key elements of sensory analysis are number one, identifying the properties of different drink products, and then number two, scientifically measuring those properties, number three, analyzing those identified properties, and then four, interpreting the measured properties. So far, we haven't come up with a machine that's a complete substitute for human senses. These complex sensations are the results of interactions between our different senses. And that's why the sensory characteristics of food and beverages can really only meaningfully be measured by people. So in sensory analysis, we are the tools or instruments that are used to measure sensory characteristics in food or beverages, such as their bitterness or sweetness level. While people can sometimes detect flavors at lower thresholds than machines or tools can, using human beings as tools can have many challenges because people change over time as they grow over, and their sense of taste and smell will decrease, and people have innate biases within them, things that they like and they instinctively don't like, and also they can change their opinion a lot. So you might not get the same result if you keep doing the same test over and over again. In order to combat some of these built-in challenges of using human beings as instruments, we need to repeat our measurements. We need to include more panelists in our sensory analysis. And we also need to establish strict rules and guidelines when we run our sensory panels. And a sensory panel is defined as a group of people trained to distinguish and evaluate all aspects regarding taste, flavor, and texture of food products. Now there's different types of panels, and we can have a highly trained panel of experts with only one to five people, or we can have a trained laboratory panel of 10 to 20 people. Mostly you would have this kind of panel when you're developing a new product or trying to improve a product or making sure you're maintaining the quality of a product. Now, a laboratory acceptance panel has 25 to 50 people, and they aren't trained as much as the other two kinds of panels, but they're very good at predicting how normal customers will react to a product. Then we have customer panels, which have over 100 people. These people aren't trained in sensory evaluation, and we use this type of panel when we want to know what our customers think about the product. Now there are three basic kinds of sensory analysis tests. They're discriminative, descriptive, and effective. So a discriminative test is when I just want to know if there's a difference between samples. So let's say I have two beers, and both beers are brewed by the same brand, they are the same recipe, but one was brewed at location A and the other was brewed in location B. And I just want to know, can people taste a difference between these two beers? Because really, they should taste identical to one another. So in that case, I might run a discriminative test, like a triangle test. So I'd have three samples in front of each panelist, and two samples would be beer A 
and the third sample would be beer B. I want to see how often the panelists are able to pick out beer B from that triangle test. And hopefully they aren't able to and there's no difference because the beer should really be identical. In a triangle test, I ask which of the samples is the odd one out. Usually this type of test is given as a forced choice test, which means that each panelist has to choose one of the samples to be the odd one out. Even if they don't think there's a difference, they have to guess. If people are forced to choose one of the three samples and there truly is no difference between them, then each sample has a 1 in 3 or 33.33% chance of being chosen by the panelist. If there's a statistically significant difference, then sample B will be chosen more often as the odd one out. Discriminative tests only tell us if there is a difference. They don't tell us what the difference is or the degree of the difference. So using the example of beer A and beer B, if beer B tastes three times as bitter as beer A, we wouldn't be able to figure that out just from using a discriminative test, like a triangle test. This is where the other two types of tests come in. A descriptive test is when I want to have the product's characteristics described to me. So I might ask, what does it taste like? Describe the appearance of the product to me. Lastly, an effective test is when I want to know how much my product is liked or accepted. So I might ask questions like, how much do you like this product on a scale of one to 10? Or of these three products, which one do you like the most? So why is sensory analysis so important in the beverage industry? Well, we use it when we're developing new drink products to make sure it's something that customers will like. We also use it for quality control to make sure each beer is the same from batch to batch. And we also use it when we're changing suppliers for raw materials such as malt. And we want to know if when we change suppliers, there's a difference in the taste of the final product. So we have to make sure that it's still acceptable to consumers. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about what sensory analysis is. Did I mention it's my favorite subject? In the next video, I'll be talking about how to create and run your own sensory panel. So whether you're a professional brewer or distiller, or you're at home with your friends and just want to run a better tasting session, I think you'll find it interesting. In the meantime, please support this channel by giving this video a thumbs up, leaving a comment down below, and hitting that subscribe button for more distilling, brewing, and drinks videos. This is Brewbird, sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.